I know that there's lots of like sponsored pancake breakfasts and like politicians and I think there's a lot of like networking that happens at Stampede. Oh, you yeah, we have a different feel of Stampede. And then I know there's like big um concert venue tents sponsored by bars and stuff. Yeah. That like put on these huge shows. Yeah, we'll go. Yeah. You got good. you don't have cowboy boots. I do. All right, then we're going. <laughs> I'm going to wear them to the festivals this summer. I'm going to be so cute. Yeah, we'll go stampede it up. But you know what I haven't been to? What? The Calgary Folk Music Festival. Yeah. I'm so excited about this. All right. Well, well let's start off the episode. You know what? You start it off. Sure. So welcome to our summer festival series that we are doing this summer on I Love This, You Should Too. We are so excited to be going to the 75th Annual Calgary Folk Festival as media people, which is like new for us. Um, as is the Calgary Folk Fest, but uh, we are so excited to uh, experience the festival. Yeah, they're sending us out. Well, they're not sending us out, but they're letting us come. (laughs) They're letting us come, yes. Uh, We are sending ourselves out. But um, yeah, so we are going to be going to all four days. We may have some interviews of some interesting people who are performing at the festival. And uh, yeah, we're just going to kind of live it up and see what it's like in comparison to Edmonton. And this is the first time in a very long time that this uh, podcast has paid off for us in any way. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> we got tickets to a festival. Yeah. Maybe we should just start applying to things more often. I think we should. Like, um, I don't know, are there any King's coronations coming up? No. Let's go to those. I don't think we count for that. We can try. We can try. True. Yeah, it's it's as easy as I didn't think we counted for this one, but here <laughs> we are. And we'll do a couple episodes on it. So we'll do today's episode previewing some artists that we are excited about, playing a little bit of their music. And then in a little bit after the festival, it won't come out the right the day after because, you know, I have to edit. We mm-hmm. will release our episode that we did while there. And... Yeah, since we're media now, apparently we'll have interviews and such. So yes. it'll be fun. I'm very excited to see who we might get to interview. We le- we sent in a list and they will let us know throughout the festival if we are able to meet up with any of these people. So I'm so excited. Indy, do you want to kick us off with your first artist that you're excited to see? Sure. And we are going to go with the no surprise, a very, very big name and a band that I've been listening to since about 1995. It's The Roots. The Roots are at the Calgary Folk Festival. So uh, The Roots, if you're not familiar, they're an American hip hop band formed in 1987. Wow. I didn't come across them until the mid-90s. Their first album, well, first they were known as The Square Roots, then they dropped that, and then they were The Roots, and Organics came out when Do You Want More came out. That's when I first heard of them. And then Illadelph Half-Life was, I thought, an amazing album. And their next one right after that, Things Fall Apart, is where they really broke through I would say to the mainstream, but this is mainstream in 1999, where like where we live, hip hop wasn't really played very often. Mm-hmm. But um, the roots, to me at least, got real big in about 99, and to the rest of the world, have gotten very big since then. Because now they are the house band for the Tonight Show. Questlove, the drummer, is directing movies and winning Oscars. Wow! And um, I have his book on my table right there. It's right underneath your laptop, actually. Oh. Hip hop is history. Wow, cool. So they are so big now, and I'm not a person who's like, well, yeah, they used to be small and they were cool then. <laughs> no, great, great for them. Yeah, I'm very we love happy success. for them. Um, I will admit, I'm much less familiar with the last like 15 years of their career than the first 15, because right. that's when I was listening to them a lot. And I haven't been keeping up, so I've been trying to get into their newer stuff more. But then whenever I play it, I was like, you know what? I just want to go listen to <laughs> Illidale Half-Life. You're an old school Roots fan. I am. I love that stuff so much. And the new stuff is good, but it's they've been around for so long. And it's such a big band that there's been so much changeover. And the sound has kind of changed over the mm-hmm. years, too. Not for better or worse. Well, I guess that's uh, debatable. But it, it is different. <laughs> And one of the things that was really interesting to me when they first came out is they were a hip-hop band, but they were a band. Like, they had an 
upright bass player. They had keyboards. They had a drummer. It wasn't a, just a DJ. Right. In fact, in, rather than a DJ, they had this dude named Scratch who would make record scratching noises with his mouth. Oh, yeah. You've played some of that for me. And like, I have no idea how he does that. And even though they had a drummer, they also had uh, Razel, Razel, the godfather of noise, who was uh, just this amazing beatboxer and would do drums himself, too. So they had all of this stuff going on, and they the size of the band changes throughout the years. But a, a few of those members have actually passed away over the years. Some have just left the band. So they have a very different group now that they are the uh, the house band right. for The Tonight Show. But uh, the two main guys, Questlove, also known as Amir Thompson, the drummer, and Tariq Trotter, who is Black Thought, the MC? They've been there the whole time, and they're kind of the the backbone of mm-hmm. that group. And Black Thought is he's someone who has achieved mainstream success, but is also still kind of like an MC's MC. Like if you know, you can respect how good he is. He's he's fantastic, and even before they were big, other MCs always regarded him with like very high esteem. He's a he's a great lyricist. Yeah. But I could just talk about The Roots for a long time, and we got a lot of bands to get to, so I didn't know what song to play, but I'm going to go with their big breakthrough hit. Maybe What They Do was their big breakthrough hit, because that video actually got some play. That was in, like, 96. But You Got Me, the song they did with Erica Badu and Eve, was a single that kind of crossed over into the mainstream and wasn't popular just in hip-hop circles. So that's what we are listening to now. Somebody told me that this planet was small. We used to live in the same building on the same floor. And never met before until I'm overseas on tour. And peep this Ethiopian queen from Philly taking classes abroad. She's studying film and photo flash focus record. Said she working on a flick and cut my click through the score. She said she loved my show in Paris at Alicia Momar. And that I stepped off the stage and took a piece of her heart. We knew from the start that things fall apart. It tends to shatter. She like, that shit don't matter when I get home. Get out of through letter phone. Whatever, let's link. Let's get together. Shit, you think not? Think the thought went home and forgot. Time passed. We back in Philly. Now she up in my spot. Telling me the things I'm telling of is making her hot. Started building with her constantly round the clock. Now she in my world like hip hop. And keep telling you, telling you, yeah. Outside of me playing them around the house, how are you familiar with The Roots? Is it more as the Tonight Show band? Yes. Yeah. And late night. I think um, my parents and I watched quite a bit of Jimmy Fallon like when I was living with them when I was younger. And so we definitely saw The Roots then. And uh, yeah, I didn't really know of them other than that. But I'm really excited to see them live. Yeah, me too. By far. I mean, there's some great, great performances, but it's uh, an actual big name that I'm also a Mm -hmm. fan of, which doesn't happen too often. Your face when I told you the roots were coming was like priceless. You were so excited. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So you are able to see the roots on Saturday, July 27th from 10 p.m. to 11.30 p.m. at the main stage at Calgary Folk Fest. I'll see you there. (laughs) All right, Sam, what do you got? Who's someone you're excited to see? Well, I am excited to see James Vincent McMorrow. Um, He's from Ireland. Uh, He has a very unique voice and um, writing style. And I think this show is really going to like translate well to an outdoor kind of amphitheater style show. He's been making music since 2010. um, And his... Albums weren't released outside of Ireland before 2011. He's recorded in some really cool places. He recorded his second album in 2013 in Torolino, Texas, which is located on a pecan farm. And uh, he says that that inspired his work, which I'm not 100% sure how a pecan farm inspires your work. But, you know, such a cool place to record. I am very into some of his covers. He's done some covers of Wicked Game and Higher Love. Um, oh, Higher Love. You mean, I've heard that version, mm-hmm. his version of that one, actually. Yeah, so I'm excited to see if he does any more. Um, he's had some commercial success using some of his songs in um, 
Game of Thrones, and uh, some feature-length films as well. And uh, he just released a new album called Wide Open Horses uh, in June of this year. So I'm excited to see him play some of his new stuff. And this is a song called Meet Me in the Garden. So he has kind of an interesting falsetto voice, and I I think it's going to be really nice with the kind of music that he puts behind his voice. Uh, I think that's going to translate really well to a live show. Yeah, I often find at places like this, oh, I guess we've never been to Calgary, but a, a large outdoor venue, some of these bands that do kind of more atmospheric stuff mm-hmm. like like he does it kind of creates this haunting atmosphere yeah. so i'm excited for that one too i think it's going to be really good so he is playing friday july 26th in a session alongside leaf volbeck wild rivers and leith ross um and they are playing from 425 to 535 and then he is playing a concert on the atb main stage friday night again at 10 20 until 11 30 so you can go and check him out i guess i should explain what a session is <laughs> Um, So a session is usually um, multiple artists on a single stage and you kind of get these magical moments where you get these artists who will have never played together before or will never play together again. And you get these magical moments of people joining into other people's songs. Sometimes they just do covers and they're these incredible covers that are unrecorded and you just get these magical moments. And I really love to just like sit and listen to what happens. Um, So the session stages are definitely worth checking out. It's like a little peek into the music making process sometimes. And a lot of times the other musicians from the other bands will join in while an artist is playing and just add a little bit of like extra instrument that isn't in the original recording. And yeah, you just get these magic moments and I love them so much. And sometimes you get to see bands like swapping instruments. Like here, take my guitar and play this for a while. I've never played this before. And you get to see, yeah, the artistry of some of these um, people who like are just so good at instruments and uh, harmonies and stuff like that. So check out Session Stages if you're going to a folk festival because they are where the magic happens for sure. You know what we haven't mentioned? Uh, What are the dates of the (laughs) Calgary Folk Festival. (laughs) You are correct. That is a good point. Uh, So the dates are Thursday, July 25th until Sunday, July 28th at Prince's Island Park. And I think when this comes out, there still will probably be some tickets left. Yes, there are still tickets left, unlike Edmonton that sells out the day they go on sale. Uh, Calgary has a little bit more um, leeway in their ticket sales. So they have a larger venue and are able to kind of sell more tickets for longer, which is great. So for my next pick, we're going to go with something very different than my last one. And this is a band called Teke Teke. I think that's how you pronounce it, but I'm not sure. But I think it's based on this urban legend, uh, a Japanese legend, of a schoolgirl who fell onto a railroad track and was cut in half. Cool. And now she goes around as a ghost and has no lower body, and she kind of drags herself around and makes a scratching sound that is like, take it, take it, take it, take it. Oh. So that's where that, I think that's where that comes from. But the Teke Teke we are talking about is a Montreal-based, I don't know what you'd call them, like Japanese psychedelic rock group? Hmm. Because they feature a a good bit of traditional Japanese instruments, like uh, the flute. There's some really good flute solos. There's also some really great guitar work that is definitely psychedelic rock influence, but a lot of surf rock as well. So they combine that with some Japanese folk music, and then there's some like kind of 60s and 70s Anka sort of sounds going on. It's unique. I can definitely say mm-hmm. that. A lot of their music seems cinematic. It seems like it could be scoring a car chase or all sorts of different things. So there's uh, definitely a, a vibe to it, even mm-hmm. though I'm having a hard time describe what it actually is. <laughs> so rather than uh, try to explain it, we're going to listen to a little bit of a song called 
make you from their album Shirushi. It. I'm excited to see that. I think that's going to be really interesting. There's a lot of energy that yeah. I think will be fun on stage. Absolutely. Um, so you are able to see Teke Teke on Saturday, July 27th from 6.15 to 7.15 on the national stage in concert by themselves. And then you can go and see them on Sunday on the national stage four in a session titled Fantasia with oh. Kinjo and Young, Ginger Beef and Nicolette and the Nobodies. Oh, man, that's going to be good. Like, yeah. Them and Ginger Beef. There are, is some crossover. They have two great flautists. Ooh. And I want to see some dueling flutes. Oh, that sounds great. So that show is at 1125 in the morning. And then you can see them in a session titled Dream Machine with Leith Ross, Deer Tick, and Lawrence Ann at 320. Oh, yeah, that's going to be good, too. Yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> so you can check them out a few times over the festival. And uh, then you can tell us how much you love them. <laughs> So my next artist that I am excited to see is Juliana Riolino, who is from Toronto. She is a bluesy alt country artist who has been uh, compared to Dolly Parton if she was very raspy. And okay. uh, she has very old-fashioned or futuristic sounds. Those are kind of the words that I found when I was reading reviews of her music. Um, she uses harmonies of her own voice in her music, as well as lyrics about lost love and learning about yourself. Uh, and I'm really excited to see her live because she does a very melancholy country music style. I'm really excited. She sounds very metric, her voice. Oh, interesting. A little Emily Haynes. A little Haynes. Emily Haynes. Um, and I think this is going to be a very dancey show. So uh, this is Be My Man. I like that. I'd been listening to her a little bit, but I think I'd only listened to some kind of a softer, slower songs of hers. Yeah, I think this is going to be kind of fun to dance to and get up and kind of like feel the music. Uh, so I am excited to see her in concert on Saturday at 11.55 a.m. on stage five. And then she will also be playing a session a session stage right after, again, on stage five at 12.55. And on Sunday, she will be playing at 10.30 a.m. on stage three. Nice. And we have a few opportunities to see her then. Yes. Now that we're actually getting into the scheduling, I'm like, oh, no, what if things are overlapping? I know. But <laughs> I'm a little worried about that, actually. I think we'll, so we'll far, I think we're going to be all right. <laughs> all right. My next band is a band called Etron de l'Air. And they are a band out of northern Niger. And that name is actually the name of the region where they are from. And they play, it's a very specific type of music, but has so many different names. Sometimes people just call it desert blues or 
Tishumaren or Asuf or Desert Rock or Saharan Rock, Takamba, Mali Blues. I usually call it Tuareg Rock because mm-hmm. it has influence from the Tuareg people. And it's usually a lot of Tuareg people that right. are making this kind of music. And there they often just call it guitar music. Hmm. But I listen to a lot of this kind of music and they are a very good example of it. It's often made by the Tuareg people from Mali, Niger, Libya, and kind of all of the Western Sahara, Algeria, Burkina Faso, all over there. And this band is based out of a town called Agadez. And Agadez is kind of the place for this kind of music. And it's really interesting to see pictures of it because this entire town is red clay. Oh. It's very cool looking. And it's not a particularly large town. It's in Niger. It's, I think, like 100,000 people or so. But they are renowned for their for their music production, particularly this kind of electric guitar music. It's part of the culture there that bands do the wedding circuits and like festivals and um, ceremonies and things like that. And that's where this band started. Hmm. And that is kind of the end goal for a lot of these bands. But every now and then, some of them kind of make it out and become known elsewhere. Uh, Bombino, who you know how much I love, also was based out of this town. So this is the town for that. This is like Seattle was to grunge. Uh, Agadez is to this kind of Tuareg rock music. (laughs) Yeah. So they actually formed in 1995. But at the time, they didn't have, uh, you know, electricity. So they had one acoustic guitar, and the rhythm section was a, um, a calabash, a, that's like a big fruit, a big gourd. Mm-hmm. They would put that in a bucket of water, and it would float there, and then hit that with a sandal. And that was the, the rhythm section. Interesting. And then one acoustic guitar. And then as time went on, they got a couple of more guitars, and the family grew, because this is a family band, too. So it's all brothers and cousins and everything. So when more of them started joining, they were able to get more instruments as well. And now they're touring the world and they're going to be in Calgary. Amazing. So depending on who comes, the band could be anywhere from like four to ten people. I think it's a great example of that kind of music. They are quickly rising in my lists of (laughs) uh, my favorite desert rock bands. So right now we are listening to a song called Tubuk Ina Juhuse, and that is from their 2022 album called Agadez from the town they are from. I love this music because it's so paradoxically simple and complicated. Because if you explain it, you're like, yeah, it's just drums and guitar, and that's, that's it. Uh, there's a little bit of singing, often repetitive, but the more you listen to it, the more you can hear all those inter- intricacies. And yeah, I-, I love it. So I'm really excited to see them. I like it. I think it's going to be another um, Folk Fest classic. I now just associate this kind of music with Folk Fest because you've been so into so many bands that do this style. Yeah, and we've been lucky because uh, Tinara Wen came a few years ago, Bombino two years ago. And yeah, now I get to hear Etran de Lair. So mm-hmm. I'm getting to see kind of a lot of the big names of this style of music from across the world that normally I wouldn't get the opportunity to. Yeah. Um, so you can see them in a session on Friday, July 26th at 3 p.m. on stage five called Mother Tongues. And it has Casa Overall, Etran La Air, and Arlo Maverick. Oh, that's an interesting <laughs> group to put together. Huh. That'd um, be fun. Yeah. And then also on Friday, they will be playing at 730 on stage four, and that will be a concert. And then... Oh, I think that'll be a smaller stage too, so I can be right up front. Yeah. And then they will be playing Saturday at 320 on stage three in a session titled What's Going On with Miko Marks, Leon Timbo, and themselves. Nice. 
I don't know Leon Timbo, but I think you were a fan of Miko Merck. Yes. So I listened to a bit of that. Yeah, so absolutely. So I'm, I'm excited to see some of those sessions as well. We've got a full schedule. We really do. Oh, same with this episode. So what's your uh, next one? So my next artist is Kaylee Cardinal, who is an Edmonton artist. Um, she is an indigenous singer. And uh, she has been singing on stages since she was four. Uh, she released an EP in 2011 and then released a full-length debut album in 2017. Uh, she has been nominated for Best Pop Album at the Indigenous Music Awards and seven nominations at the Edmonton Music Awards, um, as well as winning a few of those. She is uh, currently recording just south of Edmonton and is the host on the CKUA radio show Full Circle, which celebrates Indigenous music from around the globe. And she's very bluesy, folky, like, sound, and I'm really excited to hear her um, on a big stage. She has one of those big voices that I think will be great. So this is The Devil is a Blue-Eyed Man. Look me in the eye He told me all of his tricks He shared all of his lies So now I know it Well, I proved it again and again Oh, the devil is a blue-eyed man Oh, the That's the only song I know of hers, oh. and it's great. Like, sh- there's so much range in that one yeah. song. Yeah, and she's like got such a powerful voice. Mm-hmm. I think it's gonna really translate well to an outdoor show. Um, so you can see her in a session called "The Power in the Story" with Leonard Sumner, Shawit, and Sarah Kerchich. Wow, those are some names. Um, And then she will be playing a concert at the same stage six at 1255 on Saturday. And then you can see her on Sunday in another session on stage five. It's called The Gospel According To, and it's with Leon Timbo and Charlie Parr at 1030 in the morning. I think I've talked about this before, but there's always like a Sunday morning church style, like sing along uh, stage at most folk festivals. So this one um, would be really interesting to see, I think. If we get to talk to her, I'm going to ask if the puppy on her album cover was real. It looks like a toy, but I've never, I don't know. It might be a real dog. It look, might be the cutest dog ever. We'll see. Indy, asking the hard-hitting <laughs> questions. <laughs> so, on your album. On your album. Great music, but like, is the dog real? <laughs> <laughs> is the dog here? May I pet the dog? <laughs> yes. What's the dog's name? <laughs> okay. And who's your final uh, act you're excited to see? Well, there's so many, but I am going to go with Nicolette and the Nobodies. One of my least favorite things is when people say like, oh, I like all music except for country and metal. And I think that's, you clearly don't like all music then. I hate most music. I think most of it's bad, as most of everything is bad. Most food's bad. Most movies are bad. But there is something good in everything. So if you are someone who says, oh, I don't listen to country music, here is a band for you. Because I do like country. I tend to like a lot of older country. I don't like much contemporary stuff. Mm -hmm. But Nicolette and the Nobodies are a newfound exception to that rule because they are more of a throwback to Glenn Campbell and Hank Williams Loretta Lynn, Tammy Wynette, Dolly Parton. They are such a tight band. And then the vocalist, Nicolette, is is just fantastic. And she is a Vietnamese Canadian, which also very underrepresented in country music. And we've talked in both um, the Johnny Cash episode and another episode about how the Country Music Association is very exclusive. Yeah. Country is a very exclusive genre. They try to put limits on it. So anytime someone is uh, looks a little different, I think that's good for country mm-hmm. music. And when they're this good, especially. So they are a band out of Guelph. 
And apparently they met at a karaoke bar one night. The band heard her sing and they're like, okay, we have to go talk to her. Oh. And you know what? I'm not going to talk too much. Let's just play it because she speaks for herself. So this is one of their slower, more kind of ballady love songs. Maybe a, uh, a sad love song called Show Up from their 2024 album, The Long Way. Leaves to is in my running for a song of the summer i love that one and hey uh contemporary country music artists why'd you get rid of slide guitar slide guitar is fantastic yeah i like slide guitar it, it gives like a nice mood a nice country mood Does that make sense <laughs> Well, you can see Nicolette and the Nobodies in a session on Saturday, July 27th um, called Some Country for Bold Women. Uh, oh, I like the night. Yeah, me too. The Bobby Tenderloin Universe, Elliot Brood and Nicolette and the Nobodies at 1030 in the morning on stage five. Uh, you can also see them on Saturday uh, in a session called Analog Dialogue with Moon River, Ilabamba, Nicolette and the Nobodies, and Margot Silker. Oh, that's going to be a good one, too. Wow. That's going to be at 420 on stage six. And uh, you can see them play a concert on Sunday at 320 on stage six. And they will be doing one final uh, session on stage four at 1125 on Sunday uh, in the morning. Um, And they will have... A session called Fantasia, and I believe we mentioned this during Teke Teke, but they will be joined by Kinjo and Young, Ginger Beef, and Teke Teke. Well, that's uh, a huge Asian representation in that uh, session as well. Yeah. My prediction is, I'm sure, like, I'm going to love the roots. Of course. Because that's, uh, I already love them, Etran Delaire, all that. But I predict Nicolette and the Nobodies are going to be, like, the darling of the festival. Because I think they're not terribly well known. I think it's just the one album and, like, an EP and some singles. So I don't think a lot of people know them. And when they hear them, it's going to be hard for people not to love them. And uh, Calgary is a country music loving town. And I think they are going to do very well there. I think so. And I, um, I'm i really excited to kind of see what's happening and just to, you know, pop myself down at a stage and see some live music that I wasn't expecting to love and end up having one of those Folk Fest moments. Well, I did have a few more that I didn't get a chance to fully talk about, but some Quick recommendations from me, Ginger Beef, that we already talked about. I think they are Calgary-based. They're a husband and wife team. And the guy is also the organist for the Calgary Flames. Oh. But also does like all sorts of different stuff. And they do just instrumental pop. So there's no words to it. And also, she is a great flautist. And they're multi-instrumentalists. They do all sorts of stuff. So there's... A lot of variety in what they're going to be bringing. There's a band called, I think, Babel Blues. It's B-A-B-L apostrophe B-L-U-Z. And they are a band from Marrakesh, Morocco. And they make Moroccan, French rock music. And I love the vocalist. I love the guitars in this one. Uh, Ila Bamba is a singer. Or I guess it's a band. But the singer is Luz Elena Mendoza and... She is great, and I had first heard of her on uh, Devendra Banhart album, and she sings in Spanish, and the band is kind of a, it's kind of dreamy at some points, but they're a lot of fun. Benin International Musical is a really unique band because they are equally influenced by rock, rap, and voodoo, like voodoo. 
Oh. So they say that each one of their shows is a, a voodoo ceremony as well. Oh. So that's going to be a lot of fun. That's they interesting. They bring up like a, a big band depending on because i think when you're traveling across the world i think they often parse it down a little bit but it might be a really large band uh moon river is a lot of fun they are kind of the perfect sunday afternoon at a beach kind of music they're Mm -hmm. really chill and atmospheric there's some good slide guitar and they're doing something with nicolette and the nobodies i want to hear them play and her sing over it because i think that'd be great Uh, Robert Finley, if you like traditional blues and soul, he's a really interesting guy because he made some albums way back and then just stepped away from music for decades. And then in 2016, he released a new album called Age Don't Mean a Thing. And it was great. And he's making some really good music. He has like your classic lived in blues voice. Mm -hmm. Uh, Fantastic Negrito does some really interesting, more contemporary blues music. And I think he's actually a big name that I just hadn't heard of before. Uh, Allegra Krieger, she's real fun. And I don't understand exactly why I'm really into her music. <laughs> not to say like, oh, it's not good. Why do I like it? It's, it's hard for me to pinpoint. There's a few songs that reminds me of early works by Giant Drag. She has a similar voice to that. There's a band called L'Omelette. They are from Calgary. And they are just a, a really eclectic mix of sounds but the vocalist really sounds like one of those old 30s 40s types of bands she has that kind of sound to her voice but the music doesn't always go there as well they make some really danceable stuff too and then of course cowboy junkies are gonna be there (laughs) and cowboy junkies to people who go to folk festivals in canada they are uh, well loved for that they've been around since i don't know like 86 or something like that And my favorite album was their second studio album called The Trinity Session from 1988. And that was famous because they recorded it all in a a church, the Church of the Holy Trinity. And it sounds like it was recorded in a church and it sounds great for that. So I'm really interested to see how they will sound in this big outdoor space. So if you like blues, country, folk, rock, jazz stuff, then Cowboy Junkies are for you. Excellent. And there's a bunch more, but you know what? We are about out of time and we're going to discover things that we had no idea about soon too. Exactly. That's the beauty of Folk Fest. So uh, check out the 45th annual Calgary Folk Music Festival from July 25th to 28th in Prince's Island Park in Calgary. And we'll see you there. We'll see you there. Bye. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, everybody.